Let me show you how I made over 100K using Google Ads. What's poppin' people, it's your boy the beast of Ecom back with another video dropping nothing but you already know, value bombs. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you and share with you guys how I made over 100K using Google Ads. Before we jump into the content, if this is the first time ever watching one of my videos, then where on earth have you been? Make sure, of course, you like, comment, and make sure you smash that subscribe button if you get some value from this video, which I can pretty much guarantee that you will. And make sure, of course, you hit the notification bell as well so you become part of the notification gang and stay up to date with all of my latest content. So most of you watching this video are probably advertising on Facebook. Now, Facebook is, of course, my bread and butter. However, it's very, very, very risky to rely just on one traffic source. Massive in Google Ads is where you want to be because, of course, let's face it, when Facebook does black out, which they have recently across all of their apps, if you're relying just on your Facebook for your traffic, then you're pretty much going to see your store just nosedive. So what I'm going to share with you is a step-by-step -step blueprint that you can use, that I personally use, to help me generate over 100k in Google Ads revenue with an ad spend of approximately under $5,000 so you can see the powerful impact that it has. So you can take this and go away, apply it, and start making money via Google. That's enough talking, let's jump straight into the computer and start learning. Okay, so let's jump straight into this video, okay? But first and foremost, what I wanted to do is show you some results. Um, just to show you how powerful and how effective Google Ads can be for your business and the money that you guys are absolutely missing out on if you haven't or if you aren't using Google Ads right about now. Now again, you don't have to, you know, not necessarily saying that when you set things up, you're going to just start generating crazy numbers like this. Um, but of course, you know, even just 10% of this is going to make a massive difference to your business, you know, if you haven't been using Google Ads. So um, there are a few campaigns actually missing here, but I just did a filter. And uh, these are search campaigns and shopping campaigns. You can see here, um, spent $1,600, well, it's in pounds, but $1,600 to generate $81,000, okay, which is absolutely immense. And if you look here, you can see the conversion cost, the conversion value, which is our uh, ROAS or return on investment, is like 49%. So, you know, 50, nearly 50x uh, return on investment. And uh, another one here, uh, two thousand eight hundred dollars spent and made forty thousand over forty thousand dollars and again a ROAS of fourteen there so absolutely immense numbers here guys so you can see here the total spend was uh, four thousand four hundred to generate uh, one thousand uh, one hundred and twenty one thousand dollars okay over that period of time so again absolutely crazy crazy numbers and again it doesn't mean that you're absolutely gonna you know just set things up and get these numbers however you can still use google ads i'm going to show you uh some of the tips and a step by step on uh you know how you guys can actually get things up and running and some of the things and pro tips and value bombs as i always drop to help you guys out okay so let's talk about this so how to make 100K with Google Ads if you are uh, dropshipping, if you are using an e-commerce brand, a, drop, a niche brand, a, a one product store, you know, it doesn't matter what you're using. Using Google Ads is going to be very beneficial. So first thing first, of course, you need to be diversifying your traffic, guys, okay? You have to diversify your traffic. And of course, relying on one traffic source is risky. Again, you know, like I mentioned previously, just really recently, Facebook had a blackout across all of their apps. Instagram was down, WhatsApp was down, the whole of Facebook was down, you couldn't access anything. And when things like that happen, it doesn't happen recently, it doesn't happen like, you know, all of the time. The last one was probably in Black Friday, um, but it does happen. So you want to have at least something backed up in place so you can still be running profitable traffic. And again, if you get your ad account banned or whatever it may be, uh, you know, you've still got those backup things. So let's talk about how you can get up and running and some of the things that you actually need to get up and running. Well, what you're going to need, of course, is a Google Ads account. Uh, just sign up, use a Gmail account. Everything's all linked to one Gmail account. So sign up and get a Google Ads account. And then, of course, get a Google Merchant account as well. Because the Google Merchant account is going to be, uh, that's what holds all of your products in there. And then that syncs with Google Ads, okay? Then what you're going to need is a an app to sync them together. Okay, so sync your Shopify store, sync your Shopify store, actually sync app to sync them together. 
and let me just put in and Shopify store and Shopify store okay so an app that's going to sync those two together you need to link those two okay but you're going to need an app to sync it all together now the two of the apps that I recommend is these two here there's one which is just a native one done by Shopify, which is the Google Shopping one. It's okay, it does the job. However, the reviews aren't fantastic. And there's another one which is uh, I'm getting up and used to running, which is Google Shopping Feed um, by Simpros's app or whatever their company is called. Okay, these are the two that I recommend that you use. Um, I did get up and running and started with one of them. However, when you do use one of them, then if you want to switch to the other one, it's very hard to do so. You're up to you lose your optimization. You've got to resubmit all of your products, uh, you know, and all those sorts of things. So pick one and just stick with it. Okay, so those are the two apps. We're going to need to uh, pick one, of course, only use one. And of course, what you're going to need to have is products on your store. So don't go setting things up straight away if you haven't got any products on your store. Number of products doesn't really matter. But of course, the more products that you do have on your store, then uh, the more likely you're going to have uh, success with finding winning products on Google when you run your uh, your campaigns. So more products, the better. But, um, you know, at least you've got some products on your store. You can still get up and running with Google ads. So let's actually talk about the actual strategy now and, and some of the things that you need to do to get up and running and, um, you know, start making some sales. What's the actual strategy to generate in this money with uh, using Google ads? Well, let me show you and break it down. First and foremost thing you need to do, of course, is set up your Google ad account goes without saying then of course you need to set up your Google merchant account and like I mentioned what you've got to do is then link them together using an app. Any one of those two apps is fine. So once you've done those, what you want to then do is you want to create a brand search campaign. Now, what is a brand search campaign? A brand search campaign is basically for your store. So people, if they're not converting on Facebook or they didn't convert on Facebook, nine times out of 10, what they're going to do is then search on Facebook. Or if they can't remember your store, they're going to search on Google, sorry, for your store. And especially if you've got a winning product. So what you want to do then is you want to set your keywords, okay? I'm not going to go over keywords and all those sorts of things. It will take way too long in this actual video. Um, however, if you want to learn all this and get it step by step over my shoulder, then um, I'll have something, I'll mention something at the end of this video. However, what you want to do is set up your keywords um, for this campaign to your store name. So whatever your store name is, you want to make sure that it's your store name plus any other related keywords as well. For example, here I've got store name products um, or buy store name. So let's say, for example, your store name is, um, I don't know, uh, Trendy Wow Gadgets. So your keyword would be uh, Trendy Wow Gadgets. Um, and then you can have other ones such as Trendy Wow Gadgets products. And another keyword could be buy trendy wow gadgets or whatever whatever I just said now you want to make sure that they are exact match and phrase match keywords because exact match are the exact of course goes without saying and phrase match means that all of the words um, are have been typed in together you don't want to do any broad ones and like us um, you want to make sure that you avoid using broad ones because if you do if your store name is trendy well gadgets and you don't put in exact or phrase match it's going to then pull up all sorts of keywords for trendy uh, wow you know products it'll just you'll just blow your budget so make sure they're exact or phrase match so that's the first thing that you want to uh, you that you want to do okay next what you want to then do is you want to um, you want to then create a test bucket Google shopping campaign. And you can see there, that's what the product, that's what it actually looks like when you're in Google. And uh, what we want to do is we want to be setting up a, uh, a Google shopping campaign, but this is going to be what we call a test bucket. Now it's going to sync all of our products together. Okay. So all of the products that we have in our Shopify store are going to be drafted into this campaign. They're going to be drafted into Merchant Center. Okay. And then they're going to be drafted into this campaign. And this is what we call a, a test bucket campaign, whereby what we're doing is we're testing to see if any of our products on our store are getting sales on Google that we can eventually scale out that campaign further and start making uh, sales and increasing budgets and stuff like that. Okay. What we want to do, of course, is we want to give it at least seven to 14 days in this test bucket campaign. Okay. Spending anything between 30 to $50 uh, so that it can optimize our products. Let face, let Google, sorry, uh, spend our money. 
okay? And uh, and then we might, over, over the course of two weeks, when it's actually starting to spend money, spend money, and Google's getting that data, we can then see if any of our products from our stores are getting sales. If they are, then that's very good, and we can start to scale them further. Now, once you've done that, what you then want to do is you then want to identify your winning products. So in this test campaign, remember, we're very much just testing to see which products are, uh, you know, getting sales on Google. Now, if we find one that is getting, uh, you know, three plus profitable sales, the key point here is profitable uh, because, of course, they may be getting sales, but the ROAS may not be good. You may be just losing money. But if they're profitable, what we then want to do is we want to then scale these out into their own campaign their own google shopping campaign so we're going to take it out of the test bucket it, it, will, it will stay in the test bucket but we want to take it out of there create our own single product google shopping campaign and start the budget at anything from sort of 25 dollars to 50 dollars on that campaign on that single product that has been getting us to three plus sales okay take it out and uh give it its, give it its own campaign at like 25 to 50 dollars depending on of course your budget now if that does start to make sales and we want to scale it what we then want to do is optimize and scale the winners using negative keywords and obviously budget increasing as well now, when it comes to Google, of course, we're um, we're very much limited by how many people are searching for that product. Now, with Facebook, we're pushing it in front of people all of the time through lookalike audiences and all those sorts of things. So there very much is a limit to how much we can very much scale a um, a Google a product on Google because it's very much limited by how many people are searching for that product. Um, if not many people are searching for the product, then we can only scale it to a certain amount. Now here you can see, of course, um, let's say for I was I was testing this bunion product. Um, some of with the negative keywords, what we want to do is make sure that we're not showing for these negative keywords. And again, I'm not really going to explain too much about negative keywords and stuff. That's it's um, you know it'll take way too much time. However, you know things such as people searching for brands, they're not going to be purchasing our product. So you can see here, people are looking for super drug, uh, body medics is another one, um, advertised on TV and. NHS, which is obviously the UK health system, these people are not going to purchase the product. So we want to be making sure that our adverts, our Google adverts are not being shown when people search for these terms. So we just add these words uh, to our negative keyword list, meaning that we save money. And of course, we're not being shown on Google and getting cost per click uh, when people are not, there's not many, there's not much buying intent for these keywords. So Moving on, once we've uh, once we've done that, what is what is it we need to do next? Well, what we want to do there next is set up a search campaign for our already winning Facebook products. Now, remember, if you've got a product on Facebook, okay, which is working, then why not test it on Google? It makes sense to test it on Google. So, if your product is winning on Facebook, then you should always give it at least a test on Google because you never know. It's hot, it's winning on Facebook. They are two different platforms. Yes, that's understood. However, there um, it's always worth throwing a little bit of money just to see if you can buy, buy, get someone to buy and get the campaign to take off on Google. Now, then what you wanna do, of course, is you want to identify relevant keywords uh, and make sure that they are, again, exact match and phrase match. Um, so, you know, you've got this, let's say, for example, you're selling a, uh, a dog key ring or whatever it may be, a special dog key ring. Then, of course, you want to make sure that your keywords that you're searching for, that you that you put inside of your campaign are very much exact match and phrase match and very much try to avoid broad match keywords. Because if you are using broad match keywords, again, like I've mentioned, Google is just going to blow out your budget and you're just going to get a lot of different uh, irrelevant people clicking on your adverts. And of course, you want to optimize by using the negative keywords, like I've mentioned, generally dipping in all of the time and, uh, you know, removing those keywords, which are not no buying intent. Not any people want to, you know, going to purchase the product. Now, I've got two top pro tips for you guys today in this video to help you out. First pro tip is, of course, brand your product, something that is memorable. And this is something that I like to do. For example, let's say, for example, you're selling a, uh, a you know, I've seen that products where people can brush their teeth with this automatic thing without going that, that it looks super weird. I would never buy one, but uh, anyway, 
you could call it something can brand it such as like brushy pro or, or something that just makes it stand out and gives it kind of like a branded name to it then what's going to happen is of course people will search for this on google and of course naturally what's going to happen is your products are going to show up of course if you are branding it don't just leave it like that because very much you're going to need to add in those keywords as you can see i've put there at the end south brush and toothbrush uh, or you can jump into google's um Google's version of you know keyword uh, planner and see which keywords are getting the most searches essentially and make sure you add in those because Google Google shopping campaigns very much are triggered based off the title of your product and some of your description as well so you want to make sure if you are branding the product then you do still put the uh, relevant keywords in that title second pro tip is look on your Google shopping search terms to identify new key new keywords for a search campaign and uh, like I've mentioned when you are starting to make when you are starting to spend money on Google shopping campaign you're going to be able to then dip in as you can see here this picture here it says search terms it's going to give you uh, a whole list of search terms of what people are searching for and what your adverts are being triggered for and again you can then look and to see if any of those search terms are getting you sales and if those search terms are getting you sales then what you can do is use those search terms inside of a search campaign an exact match phrase match whatever it may be start testing and start making more money so there are the tips and step by steps of what you need to do okay to be able to start making money on Google so I hope you got some value from this video if you did make sure you like comment and of course smash that subscribe button and be sure to of course to hit the notification bell as well so that you stay up to date with all of my latest video why because you do not want to miss out on any of my upcoming content if you want to learn step by step how you can actually create this and watch over my shoulder as i actually set this all up then make sure you check out ecombees 2.0 i've got a google module in there which is full of videos of how to set up google shopping campaigns how to set up all of this which i've mentioned inside of this video today step by step over the shoulder so if you want to learn how to set that all up then click the link down below ecombees 2.0 i'll show you exactly how you can set this all up into your store hit me up on instagram drop me a like drop me a dm drop me a follow and we can try and connect on there and make sure you jump into the free facebook mastermind group as well again the link for that will be down below so i hope you got some value from this video if you did you know what to do and I'll be back with another video dropping the thing but you already know value bombs take care and I'll see you later